Good evening. The last few months have seen a set of developments leading some to think that go the governing African National Congress is divided, that there might even be attempts to sabotage or weaken its leader, President Cyril Ramaphosa. There's been a series of events. There were the comments by the Secretary General, Ace Makashule, about the mandate of the Reserve Bank. Those comments then appear to be contradicted by the ANC's presidency just 24 hours later. There was a statement by Makashule calling ANC NEC member Derek Hanukom a charlatan for working with the EFF against then-President Jacob Zuma. Of course, there are other issues. The emails that show who donated money to Ramaphosa's CR17 campaign or the decision this week to remove Azandile Gomede as the mayor of Etiquini. So, what is the state of the ANC? Is the analysis that it is divided wrong? Can the party actually implement reforms? And what is the party's real view on the funding of internal leadership campaigns? To discuss all of that tonight, the Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress, Jesse Duarte, is with me. Jesse, good evening. Thanks so much for coming in tonight. Thank you very much, Stephen. How would you describe the situation in the ANC? Is it divided? Well, I think at the level of the top six, we're working together very well. I think uh, it's a very direct political relationship where matters are raised very openly we get uh, we, we, we get to a consensus very very fast so that gives me the impression that we're not divided we might have differences strong differences of opinion on particular matters and that's not exactly unhealthy I think it's very good that we're able to speak openly and speak honestly about things that might be of concern to to all of us um, so d divisions will always exist if they implement if they are implanted so the ongoing cr17 ndz story really has to die now uh, i go down on the ground quite often and people are, are tired <laughs> the membership is tired of this this issue uh, they'd like to get on with real real stuff now they're ready for concerns about jobs 29% uh, unemployment wherever we go that's the key issue that people are raising. And of course, the question is, what are you doing about it as the leadership? So there isn't that much of a comfort zone for discussing internal divisions. Uh, the, the ANC is being forced to look very, very forcefully at, at the state of the country, at the state of the economy, at what can be done about, for instance, ESCOM, uh, at what, will, what should happen with transport costs for workers, which is becoming a real issue uh, throughout the country. It's an issue that's being raised over and over again. Uh, and, and so concerns also about what happened in downtown Johannesburg and what's happened in Soweto last night. So there's a current conversation, which is not the conversation that's happening in the stratosphere. Uh, but there, there are concerns. And I, I don't want to sit here and pretend that we haven't discussed mm. Uh, party political funding and we haven't discussed internal uh, what we ought to do and will do about internal contestation and the <laughs> influence of money uh, so you know one of the things uh, if I may say we think it's a bit unfair to pick on the president of the ANC right now on the question of who funded his campaign nobody else has been asked uh, no other political leader has been asked who's funded your campaign. Are you talking about other candidates for the ANC leadership? Any, any, or are you talking about political parties? Gen generally. And we believe that, look, while that might well be the issue, uh, we think that over the years people have supported various candidates. Our hope would be that they supported them because they believed in the values of the ANC. Uh, we think that might well be the case. Um, but on the other hand, there have been difficulties where money has played uh, a role in terms of ousting good potential candidates mm. out of a race. Our, our base is a working class base. Many people that, that uh, support the ANC don't have uh, money hidden away somewhere in some okay. trunk. I mean, let me, let me just pick up on that. Yeah. I mean, you're saying, yes. you know, people, people mm. supported the campaign because yes. they respect the values of the ANC, or yes. they, they share the values. Yes. Nicky Oppenheimer, 10 million rand, according to the Sunday Independent. I mean, is he, is well, he a well-known ANC member in good standing? No, I doubt it. But I think that um, one might just ask yourself the question, uh, did he have an interest in, in what the candidate he was supporting mm. was saying? Perhaps yes, you know and therefore supported the case. I don't know that Nikki Oppenheimer gave 10 million rand. The Sunday Times mm. is saying so. Um, I don't know that. And we certainly haven't been given a list of who supported mm. who. 
We're just looking at it from the point of view, it's come out. Mm. What do we do now? We're saying we need to regulate okay, as I, the ANC. I understand that there, there hasn't been a more important political conference since 1994 than NASRIC. I mean, mm, most people I would, would agree. I would disagree. <laughs> which was more important than NASRIC? I think they, they have been. There have been okay. sharp uh, shifts, you know. Yeah. yeah. L let me put the question and you, sure. can, you can answer it as you like, as I'm sure you will anyway. Okay. Um, we had what we understand, what yes. we've been told, mm -hmm. is literally hundreds of millions of rand yes. flowing around the Nazareth conference. Mm -hmm. We know how high the stakes were. I mean, mm -hmm. the party might even have split if things mm -hmm. had gone a different way. Mm -hmm. um, is it really right that we've got delegates who vote in secret, I mean by secret ballot, which I mean mm -hmm. I respect the point, the point I'm making, is that mm -hmm. you've got hundreds of millions mm -hmm. of rand floating around mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Can't we as voting South Africans be deeply worried that it looks yeah. like Nasrik was won by the highest bidder, the person who had the most money? I would, you know it's not exactly a secret ballot, uh, Stephen, because if you've been to our conferences, mm -hmm. The lobbies that take place, mm. the caucuses mm. that take place, mm. are fairly open. Mm. So everybody knows mm. that that caucus in that corner mm. is talking about mm. that set of mm. candidates. Mm. So the secret ballot story, in my view, is a technicality. Mm. What we're beginning to look at is, if we regulate, ought we not to begin to look at where does the voting take place? Shouldn't branches of the ANC, mm. every member, mm. I mean, some of the ideas that are coming up are very good. Uh, we're beginning to get responses from people who say, well, perhaps everybody should be, every member of mm. the ANC should be given an opportunity to vote for the national leadership mm. at their own branch level. And then that is put into a pot and the highest numbers mm. are the ones that uh, go forward. Um, I think that's one idea. A second, of course, the major question is how do we regulate money? We're not going to stop it. It's happening. Mm. People are putting money down for particular candidates. People are looking at people and saying, well, you know, if I want to be the chair of the Johannesburg region of the mm. ANC, I've got to go around and lobby people. Mm. Democracy costs money, but uh, money shouldn't cost democracy. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and negate it. That's our concern. I want to come back to the idea, mm. I mean you might disagree about yes. the idea, but division. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you this question? Mm -hmm. What is the relationship like between mm -hmm. President Cyril Ramaphosa and the Secretary General Ace Makashule? I would say it's actually a good relationship. It's a very open one. We meet every Monday mm. and the, <laughs> the relationship that is described in the stratosphere is not the one I see. Mm. I sit right there um, I think it's open, it's, it's robust. It should be, it must be. But it's also a good, they meet, they meet regularly one-on-one. -on -one. Do they trust each other? They, they, they have trust, I would say that. Because they talk about the things that matter. And what I appreciate is the fact that when, uh, for instance, the issue around, the statement around Derek Hanukkah came, mm. came, we discussed it the very next, uh, mm. on the Monday. We discussed it and we all agreed that, well, perhaps that statement was not a good idea. We all agreed on that. So but you weren't consulted beforehand? Well, I think that... Uh, I mean, clearly you weren't. Uh, well, if I you think discussed that it the next day and well, found we out all, it We discussed it as the top six mm. and I don't want to go into who was consulted and who wasn't. I think, I think you've already conceded that you weren't consulted. That's, that's not true, <laughs> Stephen. Don't put words into my mouth. I think the issue here is that if we have a concern about mm. the behavior of a, a comrade, we ought to have the courage to raise it in a collective, discuss it mm. and find a solution. There were concerns about, uh, raised by our membership about the fact that in the media, uh, the EFF said that uh, Derek had spoken mm. to, Derek Hanukkah mm. had spoken to them about uh, the vote against uh, former President Jacob Zuma. And naturally that would, that would crea create concern. Mm. But there's, there's a process of handling those matters. And it's, the process doesn't get helped by tweets, which mm. are malignant, Facebook messages mm. which are malignant, or any other statement which is malignant. It gets helped by sober discuss discussion, which we've now had, and we have a way forward. Okay, I mean, you say that there's trust between the Secretary General and the President, and, mm. I, and I must say to you that I don't, mm. certainly that's not the media view, and I realize that, you know, mm. the media and the ANC, mm. we, have, we have conversations, yes. but, but I mean, just as an example, um, 
On the Reserve Bank, it seems they're putting sure. in radically different directions. The, mm -hmm. the Secretary General said one thing. There was a mm -hmm. huge storm on the markets, etc. The head mm -hmm. of the presidency, Sissi Kordo, was on the SABC on SFM sure. the next day, saying <coughs> something really very different. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the Derek Hanukkah issue, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, an incendiary statement. Sure. I mean, and then well, suddenly, instead of any disciplinary action against someone described by the ANC, on an, by the ANC Secretary General, on an official ANC statement as a charlatan, mm -hmm. no action is taken against them. I mean, that, that to me looks well, like... Well, I, I think you must have patience. Because one of the things that we find a little bit awkward is to be pushed towards a judgment mm. before we've had a process. And in the case of, of Comrade Derek, we certainly must be given the opportunity to go through our own processes mm. in our own way and, final, and come to a final perspective which is fair and just and the process has allowed everybody to put their side of the story. One of the awkwardness that we face in the country at the moment is both a, litig a litigious atmosphere mm -hmm. and an instant judgment uh, without any, uh, any, any mm -hmm. process. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry I have to say this to you, I think that uh, the journalists judge us mm. before you've given us an opportunity to say a word. We're, we're already hung. Mm. We're, we're, we're sentenced to death, you know. Mm. And I think what we're doing now is we're saying, hold on, calm down. There was an issue. Who brought the issue? Mm. The opposition brought the issue. Should we be examining the agenda? Why are they bringing this issue now after a long time? It was February 2017. Mm. Mm. Why now? Good questions are being asked. Those are questions that must be put so that uh, Comrade Derek Hanukom can also put his side of the story. We've not really heard what happened there, except that they had, they had coffee uh, with a person. Mm. Uh, you know, and, 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 and I'm not going to defend what isn't defendable. There is a process. That's all I'm saying to you. There is a process. You mentioned malignant tweets a few mm -hmm. moments ago, and I think that I think various interpretations mm -hmm. could be put on. So let me give you an opportunity to explain what you mean. Yes. Because some people might think you're talking about the tw Twitter wars that we see sometimes between the finance minister or the <laughs> minister of transport or the premier of Gauteng <laughs> on yes. e-tolls. Yes. I mean, cooking aside, yes. some people might say that you're talking about what we've seen on Twitter that yes. some people believe is sort of organised or paid for Twitter. What bots. exactly bots? Yes. What exactly did you mean by malign? Well, malign I, th I think Twitter is a malignant uh, form of communication because mm. in 48 characters or 148 mm. characters, you can kill a person's personality mm. in seconds flat and it goes on and on and on. And there's no one who needs to answer for what they say. Mm. There's no, uh, there's no uh, judiciousness. Mm. Mm. So it is a malignant form of communication. And yes, we have raised concerns about mm. people who are mm. arguing with each mm. other about internal ANC mm. matters on a platform like Twitter where you cannot get a sensible uh, conclusion to, to the argument. You're just going to get ranting that goes on. So uh, uh, what the ANC does have, we now have a policy, mm. which is a very strict policy, and, and we're implementing it. I'm sure you've seen that there's less and less of the to and fro between people. And when Tony it does, Ngeni is still going furiously. Well, he's, 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 he will have to mm. respond mm. soon about why. Uh, but you have noticed that the, f the finance mm. minister isn't isn't uh, doing that. Mbalula, uh, Fikile Mbalula certainly isn't doing that. And, you know, even some younger people, um, we call them uh, mm. because now we have the ability to, when you mm. go on Twitter, your, your mm. phone number is right there. Mm. You can be mm. asked to stop. And we have done so. Uh, people will uh, testify to that if they are, are strong enough to do so. We have another 15 minutes or so with Jesse Duarte, the Deputy Secretary General of mm -hmm. the ANC. Stay with us. That we are.